All right, ladies and gentlemen, in order to be successful for today's instruction, everyone needs to have a whiteboard and a notebook ready to go. At the top of your notebook, you need to have week 15. We are doing East Asian Traders. This week, we're talking about um, post-Mongol China. We're doing the Ming and the Qing. So those are the two dynasties we are learning about this week. So we are in week 15. Now, ladies and gentlemen... If you were absent yesterday, we passed back papers yesterday. We have all of your papers, paper clips, and in the bucket. When you go into the bucket, please be gentle. Those paper clips are holding a lot of papers. So please be gentle when you're going through. There's a massive stack with your name uh, on every single sheet of paper in there. So we did that for you yesterday. Please be careful when you go in there because, like, do not cause an eruption of paper clips because I'll be pissed. <laughs> A lot of papers. So, friendly reminder, on Monday you have vocab 1 through, uh, 11 through 20. We're doing a primary source on Monday. Tuesday, 21 through 30, you have a lecture. Your map and your primary source are due. Wednesday, you have your last test of first semester. It's the last one. Also, uh, your pieces and focus are due, obviously, and if you are participating in the food drive, Wednesday is your very last day. I will not be accepting late food because I don't know if you noticed, but like Thanksgiving break is Friday. So I'm not having like food hanging on my room because you couldn't hit a deadline. Yes? So it is a very hard stop on Wednesday. So if you do not have it here on Wednesday by test day, by test time, then it doesn't count. I'm clear on that. It's like I'm not having crazy hordes of food in my room for a week. So all right, everyone good? Perfect, here we go. Ming Dynasty. So, who can tell me? Period, uh, who can tell me all of my Chinese dynasties in order? I don't care if you cheat. I didn't ask you if you could do it off the top of your head. I'm asking who can do them. What do you got, Joey? Zia, Shang, Zhao, Yi, Urchin, Han, Sui, Tang, Song. Yan, there you go. So Yan is your last dynasty. Who can raise your hand and tell me who, what is another name for Yan? Maggie. Mongol. So now we're meeting Ming. So on your list, whatever you got, right? Ming. Wherever you keep your list of Chinese dynasties. Here we go. We got Ming. The Ming are post-Yan dynasty. You need to know that. They are post-Yan. They are first Chinese empire. Post-Mongols. Okay, so you need to have on your note, week 15, you need to have Ming Dynasty should be your heading. You need to write Ming are the first Chinese dynasty post-Mongols. You need to know Emperor Hong Wu is your founder. Emperor Hong Wu is your founder. Okay. Underneath the Ming, they implement a new layer to our bureaucracy. You need to know that this is special. It's also strange. You need to write a new level to the bureaucracy are called Unix. Which are spelled right here. You can anyone know what a Unix is? No one has any idea. Okay. Well, here we go. Okay, so you need to know they have a new layer to their bureaucracy called Unix. They are government officials who are in charge of the money. Now, what makes a eunuch a eunuch is they're obviously men. They cut off their testicles at very young ages. So they have no sex drive. So what are they completely uninterested in? Women. Yeah, they have no sex drive at all, so they can focus on their work. That's a eunuch. Yeah, there you go. Did you think that was a topic we'd be discussing today in AP World? Yeah, I... welcome to AP World, man. <laughs> okay, so they add a new layer to their bureaucracy called eunuchs. They are in charge of the money. The reason why they employ eunuchs, or create eunuchs, because, you know, um, is because they don't want them messing around with the money. If you have nothing else but work, you're going to focus on work, right? So, all right. 
you need to know Emperor Yongle is a very big deal. Emperor Yongle is going to commission sea expeditions. Okay, so Emperor Yongle is going to commission sea expeditions. What does it mean to commission? You can raise your hand and tell me what does it mean to commission Lauren? He pays for it. Yeah, he pays for it. It's done in his honor. Like, I can commission a piece of art to be made. Does that mean Samantha Bennett, with no talent, is painting the picture? No, but I can pay someone to do it. That's what commissioned it. So he's pay, he's sending people from China to go to other, okay? He's sending Chinese people up. Uh, let me try this again, sorry. I'm still not feeling well, in case you couldn't hear it from my super raspy voice. <coughs> sends Chinese soldiers and ambassadors around the Indian Ocean Basin and the Persian Gulf to collect technology, math, and science. However, you need to know this, okay? However, Zhang He, who is the name of the dude who's leading it. Okay, so let me clarify this because I don't think I'm doing a great job. Emperor Yongle is the dude, he's in charge. He's an emperor. We get it, correct? He pays a guy named Zhang He. Zhang He is the captain. Okay, so Emperor Yongle is going to send Zhang He all around the Indian Ocean Basin and to um, the Persian Gulf to collect math, science, and other advancements. Okay, however, Zhang He is going to collect only cultural things. You need to know that. Zhang He is going to only collect cultural things like clocks. <clears throat> Okay, so Yongle wants Zhang He to go around and collect uh, math and science things. Why, can, why, does, why is China looking elsewhere for math and science? Who can explain this to me? It makes logical sense. Why, Emma? Yeah, for sure. Before the Mongols, where was the center of math and science? China. During the Mongols, it's everywhere else. Can we agree? So after the Mongols are gone, what is China trying to do? Trying to catch up. So he sends Zhang He to go look for its math and science and other technology to figure out what everyone else is doing and how can China compete. Well, this guy goes out and collects knickknacks and giraffes. He comes home with like four giraffes, which is pretty cool. I wish I could come home with four giraffes, but not impossible. So you're going to put a star. The voyages are considered a failure because no math and science was attained. However, did they get a bunch of cool stuff? Hell yeah, man. They got cuckoo clocks. If you go to Beijing today in uh, the major square, you can uh, see some of the cuckoo clocks they pick up. I don't know if you're passionate about cuckoo clocks. I'm not particularly, but hey, to each his own. Okay. So. Underneath Yongle again. We're coming back to Zheng He. We'll be back to him. You need to know he moves the capital to Beijing. <coughs> okay, that's where the present day capital of China is. It's in Beijing, and it's because Yongle moved it there. He moved it there to avoid <coughs> conquering from outside nations. Okay. Does there for strategic value. Cool. Okay. All right. I think that was a lot of information. So let's do some boards for it. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the empire that comes after the Yan Dynasty. Good. What we got, Maggie? The Ming. On your whiteboard, who is the founder of the Ming Empire? 
of the Ming Dynasty. Just kidding. <coughs> Good. Ashlyn. Hong Wu. Hong Wu. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the sea captain who is going, is supposed to go look for math and science but collects like knickknacks. Emily. Thank he. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the emperor who sends Zhang He? Good. What do we got, Jared? Yongle. Yongle. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, the new lair to your bureaucracy in China? They're responsible for the money. Good. Alexa. Unix. Unix. You want to explain? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway. Okay. So, Ming Dynasty, here we go. So, we have Hongwu, we have Yongle. Okay. Now, your next heading is the Great Wall. You need to know, you already know that the Qin started the Great Wall, correct? Okay. So, Qin Shi Wandu, remember, you learned about him in AP Art History, too. He's the guy with the terracotta soldiers. He starts the wall, the whole thing. He starts the wall. It is the Ming who complete the wall, and that's a very big deal. Okay, it is the Ming who complete the wall. Even though the next empire, the next dynasty, is called the Qing, wouldn't it be great if the Qin started it and the Qing finished it? Like all you have to do is add a G and then the wall is done, but that's not how it works. History, man, it really could have come full circle. Is what I'm saying. Okay, you do need to know that the Qing finished the wall, and you should know it's about 1,500 miles long. Now, is that something I'm expecting you to memorize? No. But is that a nice piece of evidence? Yeah, it's about 1,500 miles. Pretty good piece of evidence for your essays. Okay, so the Ming are going to finish it. That's a big deal. Okay, your next heading is Goals of the Ming. Goals of the Ming. You're going to put a big star, because this is the most important thing to them, is eradicating a Mongol heritage. They want to shed all of their Mongol, passing it back to Chinese traditions. Now, under the Mongols, how did the Mongols treat the Chinese? You can raise your hand and refresh my memory. Emma. Yeah. Why did they hate? You can raise your hand and remind me why the Mongols hated the Chinese as passionately as they did. Why? Uh, Sterling. Yeah, no. Of course. Because the Mongols have always been involved in trade, correct? So the Chinese treated them really poorly, and then when the Mongols rose into power, guess what they did to the Chinese? Treated them super, super poorly. So. Now that the Chinese are back in control of China, who can raise their hand and tell me why the Mongols are out of power? How did they fall out of power? It's kind of important that we know this. Joey? They spent all their money. Okay, they really have shit management of money. But what's the other major reason, Kate? Okay, yes, yes, they, they are really shit on running things. But, like, Katie? Yeah, the Black Plague, guys. By the way, two people in China this week were diagnosed with the Black Plague. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Americans, we can be cured. It's a very, very, very expensive medicine that not many places have. Now, if we're American and you get it, they're going to inject us with a vaccine, so it'll cure us, so we don't bring it back to the America. We don't bring it back to America and infect our friends, our family, and then everyone's dead. But I don't know if China has the vaccine and if they're going to contain it or what, or what's happening there. Because, like, it's super contagious. So it's crazy. Like, who knows? Dude, wouldn't it be wild if it just starts spreading? Like, it's crazy. By the way, they've already started checking people flying in from China. Like, it doesn't matter what part of China. Like, there's already starting to test. Just matter where in China was it. That would be Where in China was it? I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if you noticed. I've been dying this week. My dad just flew out to China yesterday. I'm sure he's not hanging out in the rural parts of China. Wait, are, are he yes, sir. Well, dude, then you might have the disease. <laughs> yeah. you know? Google it, man. It's a thing. Anyway, so the biggest thing that the Ming are trying to do is eradicate their Mongol past. Okay, The reason why the Mongols fall out of power is not because the Chinese rise and swell and take over. It is because everyone pretty much dies in China from the Black Plague. 
With that being said, with the Black Plague wiping out most of China, the Ming kind of stumble into power. Everyone kind of sees that. It's not like a huge surgence. The Ming are not known for their military. They didn't have to rise because of their military. Everyone was pretty much dead, and they just said, oh, it's mine now. And everyone was like, oh, okay. Okay, so you need to know that they are going to uh, force every Mongol custom to end, including clothes, including hairstyles, and names even. They are very anti-Mongol. The Ming will do whatever it takes to get rid of as much Mongol influence as possible. Okay? They're also going to reinstate Confucian values. You need to know that. They're heavily on Confucian values, which means they're going to implement what major aspect to Chinese bureaucracy? Test. The civil service exam is coming back. <coughs> Under the Mongols, they didn't need the civil service exam. Why? Who can raise their hand? Shannon. Yeah, the bureaucrats were all Persian, right? Remember, no Chinese people were allowed to work for the government? So now the civil service exam is back, okay? You also need to know that Yongle, Emperor Yongle, is going to write the Yongle Encyclopedia. Emperor Yongle writes the Yongle Encyclopedia, what, which <clears throat> records all of Chinese traditions, cultures, and beliefs throughout its entire existence. Okay, so Emperor Yongle is going to write the Yongle Encyclopedia, which is going to write and record all Chinese traditions. I'm talking Sui, Tang, Song, uh, all of these old dynasties we've talked about that have died out. He's writing and recording their major uh, beliefs and all that stuff. Why? Why is he doing that? Why, Shannon? Yes, because, guys, they're trying to re-bring back the Chinese culture. The easiest way to do it is to write a book and share that book with other people. And then people are like, oh, I really like that we used to do this. I'm going to start doing that. It happens all the time. Like, for instance, there's people in your generation who do, pay, uh, who do film, who take pictures on film. Why? They want to be hipsters? Yes. <laughs> but why do they do that? They're nostalgic, correct? Even though they weren't alive when it started, but that's another problem. Okay? They want to do it the old way. They want to honor the traditions of how we used to do things. And they want people to ask, is that really found? Okay, and that's the other problem of it. But. Okay, Ming decline is your next heading. Okay, you need to know that the pirates are going to hurt Chinese uh, trade. Underneath it, you're going to put a star. China has never had a what, ladies and gentlemen? They've never had a navy or a fleet. Who can raise your hand and tell me why China has never had a navy or a fleet? It makes sense when you stop and think about it. Why doesn't China own a navy or a fleet? Jared? <coughs> No, before Mongols, you didn't have one either. Reagan. <coughs> no, they're not moving trade. Emma? And Maggie, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm looking at you and saying Emma. No. People stay on China. Ladies and gentlemen, does China have to do anything? Everyone comes to them. They don't need boats because everyone brings the boats to them. They don't get invaded because if you piss off China, they're going to stop trading with you. Correct? Then you're completely screwed over. So no one has really messed with China before, okay, because you needed their goods. So you need to write this down. China does not have a navy or a fleet because they've never moved their own goods and had no need to. 
So when a bunch of pirates, <coughs> so when a bunch of pirates come and start pissing off uh, the coastline, can they do anything about it? They don't know how to. They don't know how to fight against pirates. They don't know how to navigate. Like for instance, I used to have a little sailboat. You know the little uh, sunfish, the little teeny tiny little ones. You used to be able to do, and like you tip over all the time, and you flip it back over, and you sail for like 20 minutes, and you fall over, and then you pick up the boat, and you do it all over again. I can maybe figure that out today. That was like 20 years ago I was doing that. Does that mean I can work a massive sailboat? No. So these Chinese who have these professional pirates raiding their coastline, do you think they can stop them? No, they don't know how to. That's a huge problem. Okay. You need to know that the emperor is going to be secluded in the Forbidden City in Beijing. They stay there. They do not leave. They have no idea what is happening in the rest of the country. Okay, the emperor is secluded in the Forbidden City, which is in Beijing. Okay, and because of that, Okay? Because of that, they're completely isolated, and they have no idea what's going on. Do you think people are bringing bad news to them? Or do you think they're telling the emperor everything's great? Right, because do you want the emperor happy, or do you want them mad? Happy. So if you just say, oh my god, everyone's so happy, everyone loves you, they're going to be like, yeah. And they're going to throw a big party, you'll get to hang out with all the friends that night, everyone's having a great time, while in fact... There's tons of problems going on. That's bad news. You don't want to tell people bad news. Okay? So the emperor is going to be withheld. All right. So the final blow to the Ming, the final blows to the Ming is famine is going to cause peasant revolt. <coughs> you can raise your hand and just clarify what's a famine. We've talked about famines before, though. What's a famine, kid? Yes, the crop stack. It's a drought. Um, there's uh, pests or eating the food, whatever it takes. So, what you need to know, uh, the city is going to fall to the, re uh, to the rebels, to the peasants. Beijing will fall. And then a group of people called Manchus. They're from... Manchuria, look at you people putting it together. Okay, a group of people called Manchus from Manchuria will invade. Okay, so Manchus from the north will retake. What do you got? The pirates are still just messing around. They're not, pirates aren't like trying to take over things. They just want like gold. And rum. In my head, they want rum. I don't know if they want rum over there. I don't know, maybe they want sake, but like a pirate who's like demanding sake just sounds sad, right? Like my pirates always demand rum, so like rum. But yeah, no, they're just still messing around. Pirates, pirates are kind of quitters, people. Like they're really good at sailing, but like they'd rather just steal stuff and then go get drunk with their friends. So, like, they're not taking over countries, you know what I mean? They're just making people's lives miserable. That's what pirates do. Yeah, they just want to hang out and get drunk with their friends. Okay, so the Ming are going to collapse to the Qing. The Qing are the Manchus. You need to know that, but we'll come back to that. The Ming will collapse to the Qing, who are the Manchus. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard, let's do it. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the founder of the Ming. Good, I got one, two, three, Evan. Hong Wu. <coughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the captain of the sea voyages who's going to collect crap and nothing of value. Except Giraffes are pretty cool. I mean, let's be honest. What do you got? William. Then he. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the book 
the emperor who sends uh, uh, Zhang He on his explorations call. What's the name of his book? Good. What is it, Katie? The Yongle Encyclopedia. Who can raise their hand and tell me what's the Yongle Encyclopedia about? What is it about? Lauren? It has, like, all the Chinese, like, traditions and beliefs of all the dynasties. Of all the dynasties collected in one place. It's massive. Like, you can buy the book online today. It's really pretty. I mean, it's obviously not the original. Someone asked me that last year. Is it the original? Yeah, Amazon sells original books from the 17th century. That's, that's normal, people. What the hell? On your whiteboard. <laughs> How am I supposed to respond to that with a straight face, Evan? Try. It's hard. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the new social class in the Chinese bureaucracy? Good. What is it? Brian. Unix. What is the new capital city that Yongle created? What is the new capital city? Good. What is it, uh, Lily? Beijing. Beijing. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the other nickname of Beijing? Where the emperor lives, what do we call it? Good. What do we got, Daniel? Forbidden City. Forbidden City. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What, uh, when the men come back, what traditional test is brought back that was started by the Tang? Good. What is it? What do we got? Uh, Claire? Civil service, Civil service exam. On your whiteboard, please tell me who started the Great Wall of China. What dynasty started the Great Wall? Good. What do we got? Emma? Okay. Chen. On your whiteboard, tell me who ended, who finished the Great Wall of China. Good. Jared? Okay. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is, uh, please tell me, what is the name of the people from the north? I don't want to know their empire. I don't know, want to know their dynasty. I want to know what's the name of the people who are going to invade and conquer. Good. Who are they, Shannon? Manchus. Manchus. The Manchus are going to create what Chinese dynasty? Good. Good. Tess. Ching. Ching. All right, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> so. The Ming has fallen. The Ming, I think we can all agree. When you think of the Ming, think of a cultural reawakening. Do you agree? Okay, they're trying to bring back China back to life post Mongols. Okay, this is the sec. Um, for your next heading, you should have the Qing. Underneath it, you are going to write the second foreign invasion of China. Who can tell me with a hand who is the first foreign invasion of China? Who is the first? Yes. Mongols are your first. Who's the third? Shannon. Brit. Yeah, with the opium war. We're going to get him high and addicted to opium, which is a drug, by the way, which is what, like, cocaine and all that stuff is made from. We're going to get Chinese people addicted to cocaine. And or um, opium, which is like heroin, like, damn. Uh, and then we're going to invade them. <laughs> well, not we. I'm not British. I'm American. But we'll watch. And we'll just say, <laughs> that sucks. And then they do terrible things to China, but that's a whole other week. Okay, so the Qing are now the second foreign invaders of China. They are known as Manchus. You to have that down again. You need to know the Qing are also known as the Manchus, just like we really focused on the Yan are really Mongols. Okay. You need to know that the Manchus historically are nomads. Nomads are having a real moment this last couple of weeks. Do you agree? Yeah, we got the Ottomans who are nomads, the Mongols who are nomads, and then we got these people. Okay, you need to know the Manchus will take over China, Korea, and Mongolia. Okay. 
Okay, so they have a very large conquering. Now, are they as big as the Mongols? No. Okay, so you're going to put a little star. Differences from the Mongols. They have less territory, but they're better lives. I think we can all agree no one liked the Mongols. Can we agree? Unless you were Mongols. Unless you were Mongolian. No one liked them. They take over less territory, but they're better liked by the people who they conquered. Okay. You also need to know that they are going to use military techniques successfully. Their militaries are what they're known for. And one of the biggest differences is they love Chinese culture. They love Chinese culture. So, will the Chinese be terribly punished? No. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, the Qing, who we're talking about right now, is your last Chinese dynasty. Are they really Chinese, though? No, they're not Chinese, we're just kind of funny. But... This is your last Chinese dynasty. It will last until 1917, if you want to write that down, you can. This is it. Isn't that crazy? We're already at our end of our Chinese dynasties. That's crazy. <coughs> You're going to be around for a while. But now, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know. 1917. The last Chinese, the last Qing emperor is actually going to live in the United States for a while. And, like, he used to go to, like, Studio 54. You know, like, the big disco one, the wild, crazy ones. that had, like, these crazy wild outfits and parties and stuff. He, he used to go there and party. Isn't that wild? When you think of, like emperors of China, you're not like, oh yeah, it's probably wearing fishbowl, like, you know, shoes. Anyway, it's just what I go to in my head. Moving forward. You need to know the Chinese are going to support the a Qing rise. Chinese are going to support the Qing rise because of um, main corruption. So, does everyone hate the Manchu, uh, Manchus? No, there's a lot of people who really like them because the Ming are so, um, are so corrupted. Sophia, if I'm standing up here teaching, you bet your bottom dollar your head is up, girl. You know that, right? Because I'm like dying up here. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, you do need to know a couple of things. The Manchus are going to forbid intermarriage with the Chinese. Okay. They forbid intermarriage. They also forbid Chinese from learning the language of the Manchu. <coughs> okay, and they also force a hairstyle, which you do need to know because A, it's awesome, and B, uh, AP loves this crap. Okay, this is a head. Your Manchu hairstyle is for men only. They shave your head except for one circle on the back and a ponytail. I don't know, gentlemen. I think we should bring it back. So, you need to know the head is shaved except for one circle of hair, which is then pulled into a ponytail. Yeah, that's the Manchu hairstyle. Ladies, I don't know about you, but I think it drives me wild. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just kidding. My husband is clean cut, let me tell you. Ugh. Anyway, that's the Manchu hairstyle. There's tons of photos of it. You can Google it online. Because, keep in mind, when the British arrive in 1917, we have cameras. Yeah, we have cameras in 1917. So there's photos of the Manchu hairstyle. You can see what it looks like. I'm just saying, it looks pretty good. Okay, now, 
They force all this stuff. What a star. They force all this stuff to show loyalty. Okay, they're forcing all of these new things in order to force the Chinese to be loyal to them. So it's all about loyalty. So, uh, so are we anti-Manchu hairstyle? can make it work now. Yeah, right, here we go. All right, so your first major person of the Qing is Emperor Kangxi. Okay, you do need to know he is a Confucian scholar. Oh my god! Are these people ignorant and smashing their way through? Or are they actually smart and intelligent? Is that, are they like the Mongols in every way or just in some ways? Some ways. You need to know these Manchus are intelligent. They're cultured. They want money, but they are willing to do the work for it. So they are not exactly like the Mongols. There's differences here. You need to know he conquers Taiwan, which is a very big deal. Taiwan is uh, part of the rebellion today. Hong Kong, uh, Tibet which is another part of the Chinese rebellion today. Okay, so Kangxi, he's going to uh, conquer major territories. Okay, but please keep in mind, these people are not the Mongols. They're not just smashing their way through China. They're intelligent, and they do care about Chinese culture. Now, as you can see, he's a Confucian scholar. They do care about it. Okay, do they see themselves as different, though? Yes, for sure. Okay. So, your big dude, though, is Kwai Long, Emperor Kwan Long. He is the golden age, ladies and gentlemen. Kwan Long, he is your golden age of the Qing. Now, keep in mind, this dude is ruling China during the American Revolution. Yeah, like, when you think of, like, Chinese people, like, you're thinking, like, ancient China. Can we agree? This dude's kicking it in the middle of the American Revolution. Like, he's getting updates about, like, oh, my God, a bunch of farmers in America beat the British, who are the most powerful military in the world. Is this a good news or bad news for them, though? Bad news. They leave us and they go and fade them. Oopsies. Uh, anyway, so you need to know Kwan Long. He is the golden age. You need to know that under him, he cancels taxes. Why would a ruler cancel taxes? Oh, God, people. Why? Uh, Emma. I'm sure Donald Trump right now, in the middle of everything going on right now, would love to cancel taxes. Right? He can't cancel taxes. Absolutely cannot cancel taxes. Literally cannot because my salary depends on it. Why can he cancel taxes and Trump cannot ta cancel taxes? Evan. They're so damn wealthy they can cancel taxes. Is the United States that wealthy? No, we are not that wealthy. Now, are we wealthy overall? Yes, of course. However, are we making enough money that we can cancel taxes? No, absolutely not. So, you need to know that he is going to cancel taxes. Trade will boom under him. Worldwide trade, China will again become the center of worldwide focus. That is a big deal because under the Mongols, ladies and gentlemen, were the Mongols able to maintain everything correctly? No. So uh, products, all these other stuff started diminishing. Now that the uh, Qing are in power, the Ming came back and started it with the Qing, they're back to full production of quality, good stuff. So the whole world is now going to focus on them. Okay, that's a big deal. All right, perfect. I'm calling it quits here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you were not here on yesterday for papers, I would go to the bin and collect it. Please be careful because of those paper clips are holding a lot of things on.